and there are people that stand by him. I won't give their names, but they're superstars. They know me. They know what he did to me is not right, but they give him a pass. I aching it to you live next door to a serial killer. And you give him a pass because he didn't touch your house. Yet. There's something wrong in it. Something not neighborly for the other neighbors who don't know that this man is hacking everyone up and you good with it and you stand by him and you overlook it because he didn't do it to you or he's so cool or he's the legendary this. You find an excuse or a reason to overlook it. But there's real harm, real life adjustments and life shifts that he's responsible for. I was never arrested before. After the Mary thing ended, I found myself trying to see what I was going to do next. The feds started chasing me down around 2004, 2005. One fateful December, two brothers that started out with Bad Boy with us that I know very well was murdered in Atlanta. Wolf, I want to shout him out, sleep in peace. I want to shout his mother out, who's left to carry the legacy of her, both of her sons that are now gone, Wolf and Wolf Jr. And I want to not make it wrong. I want to say Rizzo, but I can't think of his first name right now. But both of them were done, uh, shot down in Atlanta and buried. I got, for the first time in my life, an awkward phone call. And I wasn't in a bad place. I was just, what am I going to be doing next in my career? But a block number came in, and it was the feds saying to me, you are marked. Your former partner has put a $5,000 hit on you. Don't you go to the barbershop, Danny and Mel's in Harlem on 7th and 148th. You sit in the front chair. The hit's placed in Drew Hamilton. Are you familiar with any of this? Well, pardon the expression, I almost shitted on myself because I was driving around. All I could do was hang up the phone <laughs> and pull over and was like, what the? Then they hit me again. And they said, you're aware that two of your friends were murdered in Atlanta, right? And I hung up the phone again. Then I was like, I got a problem that I don't even know what I have. We have to rewind a little bit. When I saw Sean in the video for No More Drama, I realized that somehow he got me out of my Mary situation. Because Kenny Marsalis, being his lawyer at Bad Boy, and now becoming the lawyer with Mary, they got me out, cut me loose, nothing else attached. And that's Kenny Marsalis, the same person who took the 25%, ended my financial legacy with Mary. I don't understand why she chose him, because he was always a detriment to me from the last scenario. And all I did was bring good things to her. We ended with a number one pop record, a rarity. Well, I was starting to get a little pissed at this point. <laughs> <laughs> takes me a long time, as you can, if you can notice, to get aware and to be angry and to do something. Loved those people and didn't think that they were doing it on purpose. But then it looked like, okay, I'm odd man out. In the game of musical chairs, I have no musical chair. Now the feds are calling before they started calling me, I had to sue Sean. I finally got in touch with him in one of those calls. And I said, bro, you keep running and, and not having the meetings. He says, yo, bro, 
come get your money from the streets or you can sue me. I was like, oh, come on. And he hung up the phone and he meant it. I thought for a minute and I said, damn. So I decided to call his bluff, put in the lawsuit for my 25%. It really did happen where he took my stocks. Him and Kenny, my salas, actually took the stocks from me. So I said, I'll file for my 25%. I filed for the 25%. And that's a long process. They fought hard. If you look back and do your research and you pull up the filings, you'll see that he responded to my filing telling the courts, not the public, telling the courts, that I never worked at Bad Boy. I was just a fan of his that wanted money from him. <laughs> it's all in the paperwork. You can't make this stuff up. And Kenny Mysalis, uh put together a legal team like no other with um, looking at my man's face right now. He's a pit ball of a lawyer. Um, Wow, I will have that better for you. I didn't know he was going to go this far into it, but he's a successful lawyer and he wins all his cases. And they beat me. They beat me. I was about to get to discovery where you have to say on camera what happened to his stock and my lawyer would get a chance to interview all the parties. They kept pushing that off for about two years. And somehow, right before it was going to happen, the discovery, I get arrested by the feds all around the time that they're calling me. By that June, Rizzo and Wolf were killed that December. By that May, they had a secret indictment on me. That June, they came to my house and they arrested me and took all of my, uh, all the evidence that they took out, which turned out to be about 30 something boxes worth of evidence. Primarily something that I've done as a habit from ABC, Orion, Bad Boy, Mary, even to this day, I write everything down that I do. I start off with the, the month, the day, comma the year and the day of the week and this and I list everything down sidebar notes check offs if I spent money I put that there save all the receipts so for the book that I'm writing persona non grata I have every log book for all of my career moments including the startup of bad boy and all of what I did for the artists and the talent there. So I can back up the things that I'm saying. When they came to arrest me, they took all of those things. All of my log books, they took all of that. Um, they arrested me for cocaine distribution, money laundering, obstruction of justice. They loaded it up. You can, as Hoka said, can see in the newspaper articles that they still have online, those things don't ever go away. They have me, not in quotations, they have me saying in a newspaper, never interviewed before, that I knew who killed Tupac and who killed Biggie and that I was telling it to the feds. That made me a marked man, right? So... By June of that year, 2006 or so, July, things started moving fast. I hired Murray Richmond, don't worry, Murray. Hey, Murray, what's up? I ended up going to jail. I took a plea to obstruction of justice 
They couldn't associate me to cocaine selling nor money laundering, but the confidential informant, there were three on my case. I never knew who they were, but one of them had to have been around us from the very early days of Bad Boy because they told things about Bad Boy that only Sean and I would know. And those things put me in a vulnerable situation. I plead out to obstruction of justice and big deal for me, never been arrested, you know, had a clean record, never had to do time. Didn't think I was gonna have to do time, but on that day in October for the sentencing of 2000, I think it was 2005, I think, or 2006, somewhere around there, I'll have the dates better for you. Whenever it was that October, uh, they did drop it down that I had to go in. There was a time before the sentencing that if I had snitched, if I had, had something to tell them that I wouldn't have to eat their food and I would win my lawsuit, my monies that I'm missing would come to me and I would have a top level position at any label that I would like to work at. And I did not take that. I went in for six months and then came home with an ankle bracelet for six months. 